Hey, this is Bill here. I just finished up testing of my power uh, module. Uh, this is for my car PC that will be going in my 2012 CRZ. So I wanted to give a quick little overview, show you what I've done, maybe give you guys some ideas. Uh, so right here, this is just a little test box. Uh, it just contains four toggle switches, on-off switches, and lets me switch 12 volt power to each of the four lines and it also has a ground wire coming out uh, and that's just so I can test it on the bench without having to go out in the car or something like that. Uh, over here I've got the actual board sitting. Um, you see I have six relays here and then um, these switches these are sort of master on-off toggle switches. These allow me to switch between currently in auto mode or the middle selection is off and then the other selection is on. Um, so by switching between these two or three states I can sort of control the system in different ways. Um, and then this is a, a regular on-off toggle switch. Um, let me get that actually in the frame. Uh, so what this does is it lets me switch some of the functionality between two different inputs. Um, so as you can see here, the, the four different inputs I'm going off of are, so the main 12 volt, that should be always on in the car. I'm running on battery power. Um, so this is not ignition or uh, accessory switched, although it can be. Um, rev is for the reverse. So this will be hooked up directly to the reverse lights. So whenever I switch into reverse, um, you know, I have some stuff happen there. M4 is for the M4 ATX power supply that I'll be using in the car PC, or that I am using in the car PC. Uh, right now I've got that pretty much disabled, and I've decided that I'm probably not going to use any of that functionality, but I already built the board when I was planning on having that. So, uh, for now that'll sort of be my backup. Most of the functionality for the sort of determining whether the car is on will be coming off of this, and this is ready. Um, that will be controlled by a relay that is triggered from an Arduino. So the idea being that as soon as I get the car PC up and running and it's in Windows, the Arduino comes on, um, there's a program that tells the Arduino to switch a relay, and that relay controls a bunch of stuff. Um, so, let me show you some of these switches and what they do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the power. And you'll notice that the power switch, power light comes on. <coughs> um, so I've got this sort of just sitting here uh, precariously, so you'll notice if I touch it, it kind of comes on and off. Uh, this is just a little, I have the wrong size fuse trying to sit on the fuse thing, so I have to run to Fry's and get a new fuse there. So if you see it flickering, that's why. It's not because the circuit sucks. Uh, so let me go ahead and, you know, typically what you do is you jump in the car, and uh, you know your car PC might start up as soon as you turn the car on but then you go into reverse you're backing out of a parking lot or backing out of the garage and uh, you know nothing comes on because your computer isn't up yet so in my case as soon as I hit reverse you'll notice all the lights come on so what's that mean that means that my reverse camera has power uh, so that means the power is actually going to the camera so the camera is on um, the LCD reverse what that does is it makes sure that the LCD, there's my LCD panel in this little enclosure here, um, it's triggered with 12 volts and it will switch to the uh, an auxiliary input, which in this case is going to the reverse camera directly. So switch it into reverse, LCD goes into reverse mode. And then of course, we have the LCD powered on. So what's that mean? It means I jump in the car, I turn it on, the PC starts up in the back seat but doesn't actually get into Windows or anything like that, it takes too long. I put it in reverse and instantly everything comes up on the screen so I get the reverse camera without having to wait for a boot up. So then, you know, I'm backing up and uh, let's say, um, you know, I start driving down the road, everything will, will turn off and wait until the computer turns on. So as soon as the computer becomes ready, what this does is it means that my reverse camera now has power, but the LCD, well actually my LCD should have power here. 
sorry, this was in the wrong mode. It was actually switching on M4. Um, so the LCD has power now. So that means my screen is up, I'm in Windows looking at whatever front end I have, and my reverse camera has power. So that means that the computer can now use the reverse cam, and if I want to use the computer and put the, re the computer in reverse camera mode, that I can. Right, so now, the next time I go into reverse mode, and I can set this up to switch different modes, so in this mode, I go into reverse mode, and nothing changes. The LCD doesn't switch. And the reason the LCD doesn't switch is because it's set up so that the computer will sense the reverse, and the computer will put the, the computer into reverse mode. So this way I can do something like a PC overlay on top of the input so that I'm not having to always switch the computer into reverse mode. Um, means I can do an overlay, maybe put uh, my backup sensors on it or something like that. And then of course then I'm driving around and, uh, and then shut everything off and everything shuts off. Uh, so that's pretty much how it works. Uh, so now I want to show you, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and pull the little fuse and show you what is actually underneath of this. You can see I put all these on little plugs. Um, it makes it very easy to disassemble everything then. So that's what this monstrosity looks like behind the, the board. Let me zoom in. So that is horrible. I hate the look of this. Let me zoom out and show you the front of the board again. So let me show you what the board is made of. Get it in focus. There we go. All right. So uh, let's see if I have something to point with. Hey, this will do. That's nice and technical. Uh, so here we have our input header. This has all the inputs, ground input and reverse, 12 volt, that kind of stuff. A fuse here. This fuse only fuses the 12 volt input. Um, all of the outputs for the system are the 12 volt line. So if that fuse pops, it means there's no output. Even though the relays may still be switching. So that's probably something I should change, but it'd be nice if I had a fuse on all of them, but for now I don't. Um, these are little resistors that are tied to the LEDs here. The first one just goes to the power directly. Um, this little header is the reverse cam power output. Um, you see this uh, little transistor here. These are 12 volt regulators. Now, you might wonder to yourself, well, how does a 12 volt regulator work if the power input is only 12 volts, right? You'll have a, a volt drop. Uh, in this case, it doesn't actually matter. So I don't care if the output is like 9 volts, so long as it's stable, and so that's why we have this. It sort of caps the power at 12 volts, and uh, um, all of the things that I'm plugging into it, in this case, I have the LCD power on this one, and this one here is the camera power. They have their own internal power supplies and stuff, so they'll take care of it. I just want to have clean power going into them. And so because of that, each one of them has a uh, three little capacitors here. They're differently sized so that it gets a good response. So these three handle the first one which is the reverse camera and then there's two capacitors on the front and then you might have seen on the back there's a there's another little capacitor soldered on the back uh, which handles this one that goes to the LCD power. Uh, all of the relays except for this guy here are operating in normally open mode and then this one is operating in normally closed mode. Uh, and each of the relays, you can see there's a little diode next to each one. So each of them has a little diode protecting the output uh, so that when it switches back and forth, there's no big voltage spike. Uh, I highly recommend if you are going to make something similar, 
don't do this. <laughs> uh, and I promise you that if I ever make another one of these, uh, or if this one fails for whatever reason and I have to make another one, I will not be making it this way. Uh, doing all these wires by hand is a huge pain in the ass. These tiny little things and trying to solder them in place and use uh, tweezers to hold them down while you solder them. My fingers get all burnt and having to run the cables under each other and over each other and screwing up and you know going to the wrong pin is really really easy. Um, so do yourself a favor go and use Eagle CAD software or whatever and make your own PCB. Um, that's what I'm doing for the rest of my project um, so I highly recommend I recommend that you do that for this if you're doing something similar. Uh, so now the next step is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in a little metal enclosure and there'll be some connectors, you know, somewhere on the side of here, I don't know. And uh, so that'll go in my car here in uh, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, we'll see. Alright, so that's all for now. Thanks.